the partner recruiting for Acumatica. And from the number of registrations that we saw coming through beforehand for this session, I know I've worked with many of you on the phone to help you come to the conclusion that you wanted to be an Acumatica partner. So thank you for that. We, I think we also have some prospective partners and, and some other end users. So what I wanted to do is just kind of briefly mention what Acumatica is, where we focus, what we target, and in a nutshell, we are a cloud ERP solution, completely browser-based, no um, legacy product whatsoever. So we were written from the ground up to address the needs of mid-market customers in a wide variety of vertical markets, whether it's um, services, distribution, manufacturing, e-commerce and retail, we have franchise locations, we have some government, not-for-profit, all sorts of areas where Acumatica is a good fit for mid-market customers. Some of the things that set us apart from our competition is that we give our customers choices. So you always have a choice of deployment method, whether it's our cloud, any public or private cloud, or actually in some cases it can also be uh, deployed on-prem if that's the better solution. And also it gives you investment options too. You're not just forced into a subscription. So we sell exclusively through channel partners. We don't sell anything direct. And really, we're not successful unless our partners and our customers are successful. So we have a very keen eye on customer satisfaction and working with our partners, of which, of course, Artisol is one. So thank you for being one of our ISV partners. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Adrian. Thank you so much for that, Don. And uh, Bosco, I'm going to go ahead and let you jump into your presentation and cover the material. And then we'll uh, have some brief polls at the end along with questions and answers. So thank you so much, Bosco. Okay, a quick sound check. Am I coming across uh, loud and clear? Perfect. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar. My name is Bosco Mendonca. I'm the partner manager here at Artsil for the Acumatica channel. So certainly excited to be working with um, uh, partners as well as uh, uh, potential partners. All right, so just a quick agenda here. I'm uh, just a quick introduction to Artsil, who we are. I'm gonna talk about process automation and the ROI, the return on investment behind um, accounts payable, um, quick overview of invoice action, which is our AP automation solution. We're going to see a live demonstration and then just a quick couple of minutes then spending time on a sort of making the case for AP automation and the benefits of that. Um, and as Adrian says, we're going to sort of have um, the opportunity to have a, a Q&A session uh, following the demonstration. So Artsil has been around for uh, at, at least uh, 15 years. We were established in 2002. Um, we're 50 plus uh, employees with offices across um, multiple locations as you see on the screen here. Um, we are a, an ISV partner with um, Acumatica, which um, means we've got a very tight relationship in terms of our integration uh, capabilities with the Acumatica platform. Um, as Don mentioned as well, we are very channel oriented in, in terms of our go to market strategy. So we don't, we try to avoid selling direct unless it's a, sort of a very, very uh, unique um, requirement. The, the product itself is available in five um, languages. The OCR language, which is the optical character language behind it, supports over 100 languages. The translation here is that from an AP automation standpoint, we can deal with um, a, a wide multitude of uh, countries and corresponding currencies. Specific to ERP, we've got five plus years of um, uh, knowledge and experience with um, ERP integration. You may hear me mention the term Doc Alpha, which is our flagship product around which invoice action has been built uh, and we've just announced a new release that has even uh, sort of tighter integrations with uh, ERP platforms. 
Quick uh, technical um, uh, mention here, we are built on the Microsoft solution stack. Um, so it, it is built on the .NET framework for those of you who might be looking at providing um, your own levels of integration depending on um, what it is you're looking to accomplish. We do have an open uh, API, which is our application programming interface. So uh, we're pre, uh, the translation here is we are uh, an industry standard, non-proprietary uh, based solution that has uh, an open customization. Doc Alpha itself is designed to perform a couple of uh, key tasks. Its main sort of claim to fame here would be intelligent document capture or intelligent document recognition. You'll see some of that in my um, demonstration. Very simply, it is the ability to, put, to perform batch, uh, batch scanning and automatically identify uh, the document types, document classification, and then perform extraction of the, of the relevant data inside of the doc, document types, classify them, and then uh, provide them for uh, downstream processing. So we're gonna talk about invoice action and specific to Acumatica, uh, we, we facilitate the automatic proce processing of supplier invoices, uh, PO checks, um, as well as EDI, electronic data um, interchange with the Acumatica platform. You'll see that in my, um, in my demonstration. So why, uh, why process automation? Uh, very simply, uh, we, we all know that the, um, the manual processing of invoices and by AP clerks, and especially in larger organizations, is very, very labor intensive, very prone to um, errors by, by human beings. And uh, in many instances, there's a high vo volume and velocity of transactions coming in from many, many different um, facets. And most of this is very unstructured data, as you can well attest to. No, no two invoices look the same as, as one example. Uh, however, it is a well-defined process, a well-understood process uh, in terms of the AP approvals. Um, so when you introduce automation, it's, um, it's a very fast um, ROI and low risk, as you will see from uh, as I go through my presentation. In terms of some, some value statements, if you will, um, this, this is a study done by uh, Paystream Advisors. Uh, it was done back in 2014, which is still relevant uh, in 2017. The bottom line here is that a large chunk of, of those interviewed still, uh, still know, don't know what uh, uh, invoice processing costs. That percentage, as you can see, is very high. It's 47%. And as you look to the chart, um, when they were interviewed, many felt, about 5% felt that they were spending over $15 processing uh, on a cost per invoice basis. And it's only uh, sort of a, a quarter of the, the whole pie that were, had brought it down to under a dollar. So there's still a lot of opportunity out there to present um, AP automation. As I mentioned, the average cost per invoice uh, from from the study sort of came down to uh, $10, $10 um, per invoice to process from start, from start to finish uh, where, when a check was cut. Mainstream, those have adopted partial um, automation in terms of simply scanning or entering transactions directly into um, to Acumatica and then having Acumatica perform are still at the six, uh, $6 and up price point. Those who've uh, invested in, in full AP automation are seeing th those costs drop drastically to uh, $2 um, or under. And, and one more sort of benefit statement in terms of AP automation is uh, when Paystream did the uh, uh, analysis, they found that over 50% of people um, out there, um, rather, sorry, the 15% the, the and the 1% did not even know about early payment discounts or were not, and only a small percentage were taking advantage of early payment discounts. So another sort of value statement that you can make to um, your, your client base by introducing AP automation. Um, so the, the key point here is that the innovators have brought processing times down from 
more than 20 days plus to five days or under. And once again, they brought processing costs down from $6 or more to $2 or, or less and increased their ability to take advantage of uh, early payment discounts. So I'm gonna give you a quick high level overview of the solution and we're, we're gonna dive right into a demonstration um, um, momentarily. For those who may or may not be technically inclined, this is a very, very high level overview of the solution. And as you can see from uh, the slide here, um, Doc Alpha is able to capture information coming in from literally any source it may be paper documents arriving in a mail room that gets scanned in. Uh, it could be a, a, lo a distributed location that has access to um, a multifunction device for, for scanning those do documents in. It could be a fax server type based solution, e email attachments, uh, data strings, mobile phones, um, web portals, literally any source. We automate the capture. Uh, the big benefit here is that there's no manual intervention in terms of having to separate documents, put separate sheets, barcode sheets, uh, identify one vendor from another. This is all happening in a completely automated fashion once we receive uh, this information. It goes through a couple of processes uh, inside of Doc Alpha, and you'll see two touch points with Acumatica. One is the verification whereby we need to validate information we're, we're seeing directly against uh, Acumatica. And then finally, when we're done with the processing, uh, we export to Acumatica, as well as um, other line of business applications. So it's where um, Doc Alpha is completely agnostic in terms of um, capturing from, which is the systems of record, to um, the line of business application, which is systems of engagement. Um, I've been talking a bit about um, Doc Alpha, so let me talk now briefly about um, Invoice Action, which is built around uh, Doc Alpha. And very simply, Doc Alpha Invoice Action is a module of um, Doc Alpha that uh, has the logic to process um, invoices and other related documents out of the box. It is designed to capture. Uh, a fixed set of fields for header and footer information. I'll, I'll explain those in my demonstration. And as well, we can do line of extraction if that's a requirement. All of this is built out of the box. Very simply, you, you, could, uh, you could throw uh, invoices uh, at Doc Alpha from day one, and we'll be able to identify and extract information from uh, vendor invoices. As well, very powerful business rules have been built into the application to perform lookups and validation of uh, information. And most importantly, we've got a direct integration with, with um, Acumatica. So I mentioned some of this. I just wanted to uh, give you some highlights and, uh, and we're gonna look at the live demonstration now. So I mentioned being able to classify documents um, and very simply, we can distinguish between PO versus non-PO based invoices and apply uh, sort of rules and workflows based on um, what we see. We can process multiple document types. And in, in terms of validation and integration with Acumatica, we can do lookups against uh, vendor tables, PO tables, perform two-way matching, three-way matching. I'll show you some of that um, in my demonstration. And as well, as I mentioned, to take advantage of uh, early payment discounts, duplicate invoice detection, et cetera. Um, straight through processing very simply means that if we see a transaction that meets all our business rules and recognition, I'll explain that in my demonstration, we can pass that transaction directly through to Acumatica with completely in a touchless and automated fashion, completely unattended, um, and that is the notion of straight through processing. GL coding is um, available as an option if that's required and it can be performed in an automated fashion or in a manual fashion. And finally, as I said, when we export, we export to, uh, we export it to Acumatica. So now let's 
let's dive right into a, um, a live uh, demonstration of uh, uh, invoice action. On my screen here, you see uh, an example of three documents. One's um, an invoice, one's a PO, and another one is a check. If I open the check, you'll see that it, it's actually got um, a, a remittance and, and, and a check down below. So I've got three document types that I'm gonna just quickly copy and paste them over into a folder here. And um, to, uh, so simply what I've done here is I've, I've um, demonstrated sort of um, a, a, scan, a scan scenario whereby these documents were scanned in, let's say, um, um, a branch office and uh, invoice action sees, monitors the folder that, that the, uh, the documents uh, uh, designated to arrive in and in an automated, unattended fashion, captures those documents and processes them through. So once again, as I talk about um, invoice action and its main, one of its main benefits, it's, uh, it's process automation, eliminating a lot of manual steps that are typically performed um, in, in a non-automated non, non um, scenario. Um, at this point, I'm gonna switch over now to a, a screen inside of, in, inside of um, invoice action. This is typically where uh, an, an operator would, um, an AP clerk would spend um, time on. And but by way of um, bringing those transactions in, I'm, I'm gonna show you what, uh, what steps need to be performed um, if a transaction is designated to, to require verification. Once again, I did mention that if it went straight through, it would, it would have been delivered automatically to um, Acumatica. So if I click my select batch here, you'll see a, a number of different batches that have arrived for uh, verification and validation. I'm gonna explain both processes by bringing in this batch here and explain uh, what, what you're seeing on my screen here. So firstly, to my right, you'll see um, the image that was scanned in. You'll see the image of the invoice, the, in, the check, and of course, a, uh, a PO. To my top left, you'll see uh, the batch structure. So once again, Doc Alpha was able to, Invoice Action was able to automatically identify that this was a PO, uh, rather an invoice, this was a check, and this was a PO. The left middle is where we've done the powerful and automated uh, data extraction based on the doc type. And down below to the bottom left is um, a window where we're gonna report any exceptions or errors that uh, may occur during processing. So as I mentioned, every document that goes through invoice action uh, goes through OCR, optical character recognition, whereby we recognize all the key fields that we're looking to um, extract from. And typically the first process is by an operator is to run a process called verification where the application is gonna go through and simply uh, report anything that may be an exception or an error. In this instance, what you're seeing here is an exception whereby we've told the application if a character that it sees inside of a certain field doesn't meet a certain confidence level, this could be, this is based on a percentage. So in this instance, I'm saying if it's 85% or less sure that that number is a three or a B, uh, just report it to me so that I can be sure that I'm capturing the, um, uh, the exact, the correct amount. So if I've got it right, an operator simply needs to press the enter key or a function key and move on to the next exception. And you'll notice that uh, we, can, we can sort of report exceptions on literally any field on any, any document type. In this case, because I'm gonna be doing a match to um, my PO-based system, I wanna make sure that the inventory ID number uh, is correct. And I'm just gonna process that. So as I did that, you will notice to the top left that the documents have now got gone green with the check mark. These are now good to be posted to um, Acumatica. However, before I do that, I wanted to, I talked about business rules and validation uh, and 
direct integration with Acumatica. So let me show you a quick couple of things based on dog types to show you the power of what we're doing in an automated fashion here. I'll start with the invoice. And you'll notice, um, starting here, that I've done line item extraction. Once again, if it's not a requirement, uh, we can simply turn it off in, in one click. Uh, but you'll notice very powerfully, we're able to extract all the line item detail, including the quantity, the total units of measure. Now you'll see fields that are in light gray. These, these are fields that have been provided by way of a business rule or validation against um, Acumatica. One example of that is when I look here, you'll notice I fetched a company ID, which is obviously not on the paper invoice. So this was done by a way of lookup against the, uh, the vendor table inside of Acumatica. And as well, we're able to fetch things like default terms and so on to take to help you take advantage of um, early payment discounts or whatever it might be that you're looking to do. Uh, as I go through the fields here, you'll see we found the phone number, the invoice number. You'll notice that the date is formatted um, to, to be compatible with the format that Acumatica is looking at. If I click here, you'll notice that the capture date is actually month day here. Uh, we calculate the post period based on a, a business rule and we captured the subtotal, the total, the tax and the freight. So let me show you some quick examples of validation. This, this happened to be a PO based invoice. If I go ahead and try and change that PO number to something else, you'll notice that, the com uh, you'll notice that I now report matching rule errors. Why is that? It's because I'm trying to validate this vendor against, uh, with, with the PO to do a match and, uh, uh, and I, we simply report that no matching records were found in a database. So this was done live. If I change that back to the correct PO number, you'll notice the error message messages went, went away. That is one example of um, validation. Another powerful um, example of uh, validation is being able to match what's on the PO versus what's on um, versus what's on the invoice versus the goods received. And so if I attempt to make any change here, let's say in this quantity, I make it 35 instead of 36. You'll notice that two things have happened. One is I'm reporting an exception that says, now the quantity that I've got doesn't match what was on the goods received, which is the delivery slip and against the PO. And it reports that both are showing a database value of 36 and I'm reporting a quantity of 35. That's one thing. And you'll also notice here that I'm now reporting a, mat a, mathematical, um, a, a mathematical error. So we're also doing a mathematical calculation, taking the quantity times the unit price to make sure it equals the total. And that's an example of another very powerful um, validation rule. So I'll change that back. I'll change that back to 36. And now you'll see my error messages go away. Uh, so again, some very powerful validation rules to make sure that the data that we're capturing is absolutely 100% um, correct. For one quick example of another validation is if I try and add $10 worth of tax there, once again, I do a field sum of the tax, the subtotal and the freight to make sure it equals the total. And I report that as an exception. So we'll put that back to zero. And if I look at my check now, you'll see we've, we've extracted the check amount, the period, uh, the company name. So depending on what doc types we see, we, we perform different levels of um, um, extraction. And for the PO, once again, we fetched the line item details as well as relevant information that we're looking to capture from um, the PO. Example of a vendor lookup, if I change the property that I'm using to do a vendor lookup, which in this case happens to be the phone number, if I remove that, I'm, I'm now going to report that, that the phone number is not extracted and that this input block is not ready, so you'll see that it's blank. I'll quickly capture that again and my, um, my error message uh, will, will go away. If I'm unable to process this transaction and I want to, to continue 
um, performing validation on the, on the remainder of the document and not to hold up the process, I have the ability here to reject this document or escalate it to um, somebody else and put a note there so that that person now recognizes that this transaction needs to be looked at. And so I can continue processing this batch by simply rejecting that along with the note and the, the two remaining transactions will be processed and posted directly into, um, into Acumatica. So those are some examples uh, of some very powerful data extraction based on document types, some validation rules, um, and some business rules uh, taking effect. So I'm now going to click on the green button here, which is export. At this point, these documents are now released directly into Acumatica. So what I'm going to do is switch gears here now and log into Acumatica. And this is Acumatica in the cloud. So you, you will recall I processed um, um, a sales order, um, rather an invoice, which was from 3D Pipe, and there was a check to show you that, that these documents are sort of have live integration with Acumatica. I'm gonna to switch to my finance tab here, go to my accounts payable tab, and look at incoming bills and adjustments. And when I click on what's new, you'll see here, obviously I've done this demonstration many, many times. So you'll see many different examples of invoice action, posting transactions directly into, um, into Acumatica. So if I bring this document up now, I hope you will recall, and I can show you the original invoice uh, in a moment, that there were two line items. So here's the line item detail that uh, I have, and here's all the relevant data that was captured or extracted by way of a lookup and provided for input into Acumatica. There's my post period, there's my vendor, there's my description, and these are my, these are my line item details. Similarly, if I had to switch to um, another, I, I could show you the, the purchase order as well as the, the checks being received. That is sort of the, uh, the, uh, the demonstration of um, invoice action, capturing, capturing transactions uh, and, and processing the validating against Acumatica and then, and then processing them uh, and posting them directly into um, Acumatica. So um, a number of things you, you've seen here. So I'm gonna switch back now to my presentation and uh, continue with the remainder of my slides. And it looks like um, I've gone through at a fairly fast pace here, which gives us uh, a lot of time for Q&A and hopefully I'll be able to give you at least uh, more than 15 minutes of your time back um, in the time that we scheduled for this uh, presentation. So we left off. We left off here, and um, what you're seeing on the screen is the ability for us to have different types of workflows associated with um, with the um, with the Acumatica. So in terms of making the business case for AP automation, let's quickly talk about uh, return on investments and, and business benefits. Um, most of you should be familiar with uh, AIM, it's the Association of Information and Management. Um, it, did a, it did a survey um, fairly recently and over 50%, in this case 61% of organizations reported a payback period of 12 months or less for AP automation. That is a very, very quick um, sort of ROI. And as you can see, 20% of, of those interviewed reported the payback in as little as six months. Um, and invoice cost reduction of 50% or more. And um, so very simply that the translation here is that the solution is able to reduce a lot of manual labor, automate a lot of these processes, freeing up people to do much more 
um, with their time than what, what they were previously spending um, in terms of manual processes. Um, so once again, why AP automation and why Doc Alpha and, um, and, and the solution? Document sorting is eliminated um, in, in mail rooms where information may come in. We're able to automatically classify documents as we see them in, in a batch. So once again, not having to put manual separate sheets and separate one vendor from another, identify single versus multi-page documents. All of this is done very, very powerfully um, and automated in an unattended fashion. Data extraction based on the doc types we see. You saw an example of that when I showed the PO versus the check uh, versus the invoice. Reduction of errors because now we're extracting the data automatically and we're performing very, very powerful validation to ensure that the data that was either automatically extracted or wasn't there is fetched automatically and uh, provided for, for validation and processing. The routing of data and documents, you saw me perform a quick workflow where I can reject a document or send documents directly to Acumatica. And of course, uh, we have a very powerful um, audit trail behind it to ensure that uh, we, we, keep, we keep tabs on the document process from, from start um, to finish. So down below, uh, you see the three main benefits of the AP automation, reduce time and effort, reduce errors, and increase your visibility and control of documents. The strategic impact of, of this process, uh, once you look beyond the quick return on investment, is that this solution can be deployed across multiple um, uh, departments now beyond, beyond simply AP, if that's something. But obviously, as ERP vendors, your, your focus is on, the, um, is on the ERP integration. The key performance index matters to your to your customers, your CF, the CFO. So we include we we increase visibility, be powerful. We um, show you very powerful reporting capabilities. Um, people can take advantage of knowing where their revenue growth is, increased profitability, market expansion, and so on. And finally, with intelligent capture and process automation. Uh, some of the obvious benefits are you, you now increase customer satisfaction and improve relationship with vendors, uh, data visibility again, scalability to, to support growth. So as companies acquire other companies and they grow, uh, the solution scales uh, very easily, quickly, um, and inexpensively um, with that. And huge cost savings when you go from a processing cost of ten dollars or more per invoice down to about two dollars. I mean, you do the math, and it's it's very obvious um, how the cost savings are, are are very significant. And before I say thank you for your time and and open it up to Q and A, um, uh, understanding that you are um, you are vendors or potential vendors, I just wanted to quickly mention that Artsil. Uh, together with um, our partner Acumatica, have got something called a fast track program where your investment in terms of time and resources is very, very minimal, if any. We do all the legwork for you, demonstrations, pre sales support, etc. I'd be happy to talk to those that um, want to understand more about partnering with. Um, with Artsil and our Acumatica solution. With that said, and of course, we offer very generous margins for, for that. Um, and so I encourage you, if you're if there's any level of interest, to reach out um, and connect with us um, as soon as, as as soon as you can. With that, I'm now gonna hand this over uh, back to um, Adrian to open it up for QA or to complete the presentation. And then we'll, let, we'll take question and answers. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bosco. Great presentation. Uh, we do have a few questions here. We have a question from Sean. Sean, thank you so much for your question. I apologize if I missed this. Can you have the scan document attached to the bill? Uh, the answer is uh, yes. So, uh, so 
we keep we keep the scan document throughout the process until we we release it to Acumatica. Um, so when you say attach it to the bill uh, through a workflow configuration, we can determine whether you want the actual physical document to go all the way through with the posting of the transaction instead of Acumatica. We can also um, archive it to an, a content management solution and provide the link to where that document resides. My understanding is that Acumatica also supports uh, image enabling and um, we may get um, Dawn to talk a little bit more about that, but absolutely, we can post both the data as well as the image. Does that answer the question? Um, Sean, I'm Sean, let us know if, um, if you have a further questions in regard to this question. And I do have a poll up if I can ask the audience if you could just answer this one poll, that would be awesome. Are you interested in learning more about any of the following? Adding Acumatica to your cloud ERP portfolio, uh, Acumatica Intelligent Data Capture for Acumatica by Artsul. So if you could just take a moment to answer that question. And uh, we do have another question here. Um, how do we become an Acumatica partner? Are there any prerequisites? Don? Oh, that's a perfect question. Yeah, so so since we work only through partners, we've got a, a very nice partner program put together for people who would like to be partners. And um, prerequisites, yeah. What we look for really are companies that have experience selling ERP solutions and creating happy, satisfied customers. We look for organizations that have the people and the bandwidth in order to train a number of people in Acumatica. So some of the core functionality and training areas that we look at are sales, pre-sales, a business consultant, a technical person, somebody who would be adept at implementing the software and training end users. So that's important. We also look for organizations that, that do a good job of sales and marketing and are willing to add Acumatica to the website and promote it during their normal marketing activities. Um, also, because of the flexibility of the program, it's I often find that partners who have um, development skills, especially around .NET, C Sharp, uh, and Microsoft technologies, HTML5, and so forth, and, and those that are adept at integrating clouds with other clouds, that's that's also ideal. But um, we've got we've got a real good program, and really not tremendous barriers to entry, other than looking for experience, diligence, the time and bandwidth to focus on Acumatica. And that's, you know, that's pretty much it. It's got to be a sincere desire to focus net new activities on, on Acumatica. And, and we really have the tools and the resources and the people on the team to help you do that. So thank you for the question. I'd be happy to talk with you later, too. Thank you for that, Don. And Bosco, you mentioned a reseller fast track program with Acumatica. Can you elaborate on that? Um, yes. Yeah. So when you are a bona fide um, Acumatica reseller, we automatically embrace uh, embrace your organization as an art sale uh, reseller. So very simply, what that means is that you're entitled to. Uh, some really nice, um, I'll start with the financial aspect first, some really nice um, uh, discount on the, on, the, on the software solution as well as the professional services. There's no um, engagement with ArtSell in terms of having to be certified on our solution. We perform all the live, the, the demonstrations uh, for you. Uh, we interact directly with your uh, end user through you. Um, and then we help you architect the solution, price it out. Um, so basically, we we take your prospect from from start to finish with no re, with no requirement from the partner uh, from the reseller other than uh, you know working with us on that. I hope um, uh, so. Once again, there's no requirement to be trained or certified on our solution, and that's the bottom line. 
which is, is it's really a nice program and I think you'll find that that the Acumatica channel and ecosystem whether it's ISVs like Artsil and and this fast track program that Bosco described or or whether it's collaborating with us the whole channel is is very collaborative and cooperative with one another so you'll often find um, nice relationships like this that are open to you just as a result of being an Acumatica partner. And, you know, this could go a little bit further into what do we do to help fast track partners when they come on board. We actually assign you a partner account manager right from the beginning. They can help you engage in any sales cycles that you might have going on right now where where you think you're in danger of either losing a customer or you know you're in a sales cycle and a, a true cloud solution might be better. We have pre-sales people on the team that can help you qualify opportunities and do demos for you. And for new partners and even established partners with particularly taxing implementations, we have a team that you can engage if you so choose to help you with your first implementation because like, like everybody knows, that first one is always the most difficult because there's still a little bit of unknown. So we'll stand behind you there as well and offer services or project management along with that first deal or first couple to ensure that you end up with a happy, satisfied customer. Because that's, that's, of course, the end of the day, everybody's goal. So hopefully that's helpful as well. And we've got a very strong, robust enablement program. And um, we have a question from Skip. Skip, thank you so much. Um, are there options to, to deploy the solution, SaaS, on-prem, perpetual subscription? Thanks, Skip. So why don't I have Bosco answer that first, because I have a feeling that's, that's related to Artisal. And then, if you'd like, I can answer that for Acumatica, too. Yeah, so thank you, Skip. That's a great question. Uh, so today, uh, Invoice Action is designed to work primarily in a private cloud environment, which essentially means it is still primarily an on-premise solution. Um, so in a private cloud, where we've got full control of the deployment, it can operate. Uh, our public cloud offering from Artsil is due uh, the, um, the, the latter part of uh, this year, so look for it. Towards, of, uh, towards the end of summer or um, early fall of uh, this year. And that'll be a true, we do offer subscription-based pricing in the private cloud environment that I discussed. So we do have SaaS-based pricing, but public cloud will be, um, as I said, later this year. Yeah, and of course, from Acumatica's perspective, we can deploy in the Acumatica cloud any public or private cloud and on-prem as well. So a lot of options and flexibility. And like I mentioned, through web services, we can connect clouds together. So obviously the Artisol solution and ours are already integrated, which is a step ahead of the game. Light years ahead of some of the older ERP solutions. Um, so I see that 53% of the audience has voted. So if we could uh, have more vote, that would be great. And I'm going to leave that up for a minute or so. And I don't see any other questions. Thanks, you guys, for a, a great presentation. Is there, um, Bosco, is there a price starting endpoint or does that just vary based on the unique requirements of the prospect? It, it is somewhat unique, but I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer you this information just to give you an idea. Uh, pricing is based on two, two, literally two, uh, two things. One is the volume of invoices per year, uh, and we, we don't reference number of pages. An invoice can be multiple pages. So we look for the annual number of invoices to be processed per year. And obviously the second piece is the number of concurrent uh, user licenses required. We do have price bundles that sort of include everything out of the box. Uh, I would prefer not at this point to volunteer what a starting price is. Um, I would entertain a sort of uh, 
any uh, acumatic or reseller touching base with us, our partner and volunteering that information, um, you know, on, on a case by case basis. And Bosco, do you have a uh, contact information? And I will be sending up just uh, the the audience is asking for your contact information, but I will be sending a follow up email with Bosco's contact information and Don's con uh, contact information as well. So look, be on the lookout for that. That's going to come from Adrian at erpvar.com, uh, and I'll be sending the recording along with everything. Uh, but Bosco, could you um, share your contact information? Perfect. Look at that handsome. I told you I was tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, big for, is that big enough for everybody to see? I think so. Office number 905-326-0676, extension 227. Perfect. Yeah. And you've got my uh, email address there. Bosco underscore M at artsaltech.com. And with that, I don't see any other questions. Thank you so much, everybody, for spending this hour with us. Uh, I see in our poll we had 25% answer that they're interested in adding Acumatica to their cloud ERP portfolio. Great. And Don will be in touch with you. Uh, and then 63% are interested in learning more about your intelligent data capture. Boston. That's fantastic. I look forward to touching base with each one of you. Wonderful. We really, we really appreciate everybody's participation. And special thanks to the Acumatica partners that are on the phone as well. And, and Bosco, great presentation. Thank you all. And thank, thank you, you, Don and Bosco. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.